I do like it when I come across a camera I haven't seen before. Um, uh, the other week at a camera fair I came across a Konica and the Konica Z Up 80. Now I've had a Z Up before but not this earlier model. Now Konica were quite big in the camera manufacturing sphere especially in the sort of late eight, well 80s 90s with automatic cameras and they were quite quick at doing automatic focusing cameras and this at the time in I think 88 89 was considered to be a very advanced camera and if we look at it straight off it does look quite high tech we've got automatic focusing and when we turn on two things happen the um, lens is um, exposed there's an automatic lens cap which is quite nifty and um, the flask comes up in case the flask um, is going to be operated on the back we have a zoom operating lever and when we zoom we can see either 80 or 40 the, the range of the camera is 40 to 80 so it's not exactly a right angle camera but it might be good for some portraits to load the film is really straightforward it's fully automatic loading filming there across there and it has D, um, I say it has DX coding, yes it has DX coding so we don't have to worry about the um, ISO. Now this is quite a sophisticated camera. It has two basic modes, a mode on the top and a mode on the second little button um, and in automatic mode we basically just point shoot but when we look through the viewfinder we've got several indicators we have a flash if it's going to use flash and I quite like this mode where it tells us how it's focusing whether it's focusing for a group whether it's focusing for a landscape we've actually got little flashing icons in the window we have a little mountain when it's uh, in um, a landscape we have a little group um, when it's a group or when it's closer I don't think I've seen that in many other cameras so that's a high feature we have as well a dioptic um, for your eyes so if you're sort of far-sighted you can adjust the viewfinder I really like that feature it's not the most intuitive camera I found because you have you can switch your flash on and off then you've got an array of buttons here which slightly confused me but we can um, have single shot we have continuous shot and we have um, a self timer and by pressing those we can um, get into those modes we also have a mode of where we can set a date on the camera um, and a useful for landscape infinity mode and we've also got multiple exposure and a timed exposure all by pressing these buttons down here um, i found the, the bucas manual really useful with this camera um, as i said it's not completely intuitive i found but when i read the bucas manual I found it a lot easier um, but in auto mode switch on it's very straightforward um, it fits surprisingly well in the hand I say surprisingly it has been very carefully designed and this was quite a new feature to have a grip grip like this to turn the camera off you think you might press the on off but you don't you actually pop down the flash and that will put the lens array for you quite a good detail on the back here on the LED as I said this camera handled better than I thought it was going to be let's see how I got on when I took it out to use it was a very bright sunny afternoon when I went to Corfe Castle and so the camera had the best of conditions um, it was about I don't know actually for half past five in the afternoon I think this image was taken so we've got some shadows and the castle looks incredibly sharp here 
this is on right angle and again we've got online at sharp view we've got um, detail with the tonal range is nice the camera is dead easy to use and as I said you've got this interesting icon of let's which tells you what your focus is so for example the castle was the landscape and this i think gave me a group again this is beginning to test the camera a little bit because you've got the dark um, shadows and you've got uh, highlights there with the grass however i think the metering is coping very well this is an interesting camera to take out because it as i said was i think launched about 87 88 and it was quite sophisticated for the time and with the I didn't find that I needed the infinity um, option which on some other cameras I have a pentax which I have used the landscape because it's inclined not always to focus on the infinity when you want to um, again this church at church knoll has come out really sharply lots of detail there in the stonework and those juniper trees are looking good as I said, this camera is a good tutor. It's perhaps not the smallest of cameras, so putting it in your pocket isn't ideal. I, however, it will go in a bag easily and it just feels right. And if you want a few more details like, as I said, the Infinity Lock or Multiple Exposure or Self Timer, you have all those things and you can put the date on. Um, I don't know if it would actually go up to 2022 i think it probably wouldn't it is a bit of a mystery to find out where the batteries go in this camera however i in the end found that there's two little screws on the side so you have to actually unscrew the side um, this is our final photo and you can see it's 1988 here well it wasn't but never mind i enjoyed using this camera hope you have enjoyed this video bye for now